welcome to Color Your World. And tonight we have a lovely show for you and a delightful guest. Please let me introduce to you Rodney Carnegie. How do you do, Rodney? How you doing, Connie? Nice to have you here, right? Thank you for having me. Yes, and you are a professional? Yeah, financial service professionals with me and yes. wife. That's great. Well, I want to talk to you, uh, Rodney, before we get into um, professional services um, about your background and your schooling and what you think of the schools today. So, you did grow up in Brockton? Yeah, I grew up in Brockton. I was actually born in Stowen, uh, but we were living in Brockton, but Stowen was the only hospital that was delivering babies at that time. Uh -huh. So, born in Stowen, but grew up in Brockton, went to Brockton High School. Yeah. You know, so, I lived there now, all Now, when life. you went to Brockton High School, was it the school it is now? Well, it was much smaller there now. They only had the three buildings uh, that were open now. They opened up the fourth building now, so there's much more kids going to school there yeah. than when I was there. Yeah. So when you were in high school, were you working after school or anything? Uh, no, I didn't work until maybe my senior year of high school. I worked a summer job. Uh-huh. And um, what made you decide to go into to college? Had you always planned to go to college? No, at, at first I was planning on just, you know, working after high school, uh, but then I was playing sports in high school, so my last year uh, I was getting recruited by a lot of different schools, which made me you know, open up different ideas about going to college. Yeah, so what sports did you play for? Playing. I was playing basketball. Basketball. Yeah. Well, I guess you're tall enough, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a, a short six foot seven. Yeah, six foot <laughs> seven. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you applied for a college, did you get accepted? Right? Oh, you, you, you were already accepted, right? They, well, they, you still have to apply, even though you, you know, you do have get some scholarship offers. You still have to apply. You know, yeah. you still have to do your what was SATs at that time. Yeah. So you still need to pass your SATs. So what college did you go to? I ended up going to UMass Lowell. So I went to UMass Lowell for about a year. Uh -huh. And then I ended up transferring from UMass Lowell. I went to the College of St. Joseph's in Vermont. Yeah. So how would you like Vermont? Vermont was good. It's much small, smaller classes, you know, more personable. You know all your professor and yeah. professors. It's good getting away from the city. Yeah. So while you were up in Vermont, uh, I heard you bought some property. Yeah, actually, uh, after I graduated from there, I actually had bought a rental property out there. You did? Yeah. Have you since sold it? Uh, yeah, just just recently. Yeah. yeah. So I had it for about six years. Yeah. So when you were in school, what courses did you take at college? I, I got my first bachelor's. I had it in management. And then my second bachelor's, I finished the year after in finance. Uh-huh. And tell me, were you working all this time? Yeah, I worked the summer times. I worked all the school breaks. And then when I was at school, I did, like, you know, they had, like, well, like a work, like a school work job there. Yeah. So what were you doing on your jobs? What did you uh, different different types of jobs. I worked at a retail store the whole way through college when, in the summer times and school breaks. And when I was at, at at school, I worked at the gym. Yep. Oh, you worked at the gym? Yep, I worked at the gym. All right. Well-rounded fellow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when did you decide to go into professional uh services they have financial services well first i worked in retail since i was already working in retail through college for the, that four and a half years yeah i stayed in retail for about 14 years oh you did yes mm -hmm. so, so i managed um i've been managing stores since i was about 18. yeah so i worked in like in a clothing store you know for like 13 years and then i did like one year working in a shoe store yeah well i would say that working in stores and working with people really qualified you a lot for the job that you're in now. Well, in terms of doing our financial services for you know, for people, you you know, you're meeting a lot of people, you're talking to a lot of people, so you know, working in retail is very yeah, similar. So we were very comfortable with people. Yes. Yeah. Now, and when we were talking, you said you thought it was very advisable for students to work while they were in college, not because they needed the money. But for other reasons. Well, yeah, you want to have some type of work experience by the time you get out of college because I know a lot of people that are graduating, they don't have any work experiences and it's hard for them getting jobs, you know, yeah. if you get some so work it's experience, nice, yeah. yeah, even did, if you do your internship. Mm -hmm. And do they count, like, supposing you did community service, would that look good on a resume? Yeah, community service looks good and good on a resume, especially if you're doing it, you know, within your local community and stuff like that. That usually is always good. Yeah. 
So you continue to play all through a college? Did you continue to, continue to play basketball? Yeah, I played basketball in like all four years there. Yeah, do you play it now? Yeah, I play, usually try to play at least two to three times a week, you know, when I have time. Yeah. Is that in an, an organization or at the gym? No, just like the the older guys, you know, like a lot of people that I went to high school with, you know, we still play at the Brox and Y. Yeah. So, you know, so we would play a couple times a week, you know, early in the morning before we're going out for our day for work. Yeah. Well, you keep in shape then. Yeah, try to. Yeah, you try to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about now your job that you presently have. Um, can you explain a little bit about what you do? Well, currently, me being a financial service professional basically just means that we, we work with people with, you know, helping them fulfill their goals. So whatever, they, we take a snapshot of where they're at right now and then where they want to be in the future, and we try to find ways for them to get there. Yeah. So, for somebody now, um, just start now, when would you, would you suggest they need a professional service advisor? Well, it's, it's better to get started early because the, the earlier that you get started, uh, even though, you know, when you're first starting out, you know, you're just getting out of the college, you know, your income is not really, you know, where it's going to be, you know, maybe five or ten years later, but it's better to get a start, you know, get a, a picture of where you want to be. Maybe it might not be in terms of retirement, but where you want to be in five years, you know, and what you want, what, what you want to happen. Yeah. You know. So, um... Do you do a lot of advising um, to young people or the kind of people you have? Uh, in terms of my, my personal clients, I have a mixed group. I have some people, you know, in their probably, you know, late 20s, early 30s, you know, up until I have, you know, some clients in their, you know, mid to late 70s. Yeah. All right. What are the benefits now? This is the benefits of having a, per, you know, a professional like you. Advise them. Well, the benefits of working with a a, a professional is is the, that's the key to the words professional. That person will basically help you with just whatever you you want to do. Something that you might not be able to do yourself, or something you might have not have thought of, your, of yourself. You know, so they get me myself. I would give you you know some options to get to whatever goal you that you want there, and then if we do find there is a need there, and then we help you go with, go with. Yeah. It whichever one fit, best fits you. Yeah. Well, it would seem to me, you know, when you look around at a lot of people, they're spending, they're having a good time, and sometimes they're not thinking of their future. And um, maybe it's a good time to take stock of just where your money's going. Would you say so? Yeah, it's, it's always good to look where, you know, your budget is at compared to, you know, what you're making, what you're spending. You know, just see, just seeing, you know, what you're spending your money on. It's always good to, you know, good to just break it down, see what you're spending on instead of just, you know, just spending the money and then wondering where it went. Yeah, it's 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 amazing how much money you can spend, and it's no benefit to you. It's just as well put into some type of a financial benefit. Yeah, you know, it's like if if that's your goal, and in, in terms of the, if you want to save. You know, it's better to you know to start saving early. But you know, if there, if you at this point you, you can't start saving now, but your goal might be in the next three to five years that you want to start saving a certain amount or whatever it may be. You know, we can still help yeah. you with those with that to get you to where you want to be. Yeah. Well, I remember back a ways. I speak only for myself that my income changed a lot, and I had to make some adjustments. And I found I spent an awful lot of money that I really didn't have to, and I could still live a good life. I stopped buying lottery tickets, for one thing. <laughs> yeah, that definitely helped you save. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I see people go through uh, and get these lattes and coffees, and, um, you know, many times a day, and that, that amounts to a good amount of money, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's stuff you don't really think about, you know, if you're buying two or three coffees a day or two or three sodas a day, you know, just saving that. It might be, you know, $10 a day that you're spending there, so you figure that's, you know, $50 a week. Yeah. And then that might be $200 a month that you could use for something else. Yeah. You know, where you're just spending on a soda and coffee. Yeah. Well, it's good to have, treat yourself. I think you should treat yourself. But at the same time, I think that, because uh, I've seen people, and they'll be asking people, 
to borrow money because they don't have enough, but I'll see them go and buy these $5 drinks over and over again <laughs> yeah. and things like that. So say a young couple were starting out and they just got married. What advice would you have to them? Well, for a young couple, the first thing I would do is sit down with them and just ask them, do they have any questions? Because sometimes they might have some stuff that they've thought about or they've heard about. So I would ask them first, you know, what, what, what questions do you have for me? And then we would go in, you know, for a younger couple, let's say they just got married, they're in their mid-20s, you know, early 30s. We would just, you know, see where they want to be in maybe five to ten years. We probably really wouldn't talk about retirement to see where they want to be because they're just starting out. They might still be living in an apartment, but five years they might want to, you know, move into a home. Yep. So they might want to start saving for a home or something like that, or they might have just recently had a child. So we might help them maybe with some college planning, or we might just help them with just some savings, you know, to help them get into the home. If in five years they want to put a plan together, we do something for the debt like that for them. Yeah. Um, you had said something to me earlier about a professional finance advisor as against a professional financial advisor what were the two differences there well the, the difference between in, in you know an investment advisor an investment advisor charges a fee so yeah. they're charging a fee for any advice that they give you yeah so any advice that you give they usually they, they're charging a price you know on you know let's say it might be just for the year they charge a price for the year yeah uh, so they're charging a, a price just for that advice yeah. in terms of somebody who just is a financial service professional who's uh, just an agent an agent doesn't charge a fee for any advice that they give you. It doesn't, you don't charge a fee being no. a professional. Yeah. No. no. So that if somebody called you up and said they'd like an appointment, you would spend a certain amount of time with them and that would be all free. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like any time that we sit down, there's, there's no charge. Yeah. And when, when, when do you start charging? No, we don't charge. You don't charge at all? No. But you have programs that for them that benefit the company you work for, right? Yes, yeah. like it's like that's it. if they if they are if they do choose to do a business with me in, in my company, then I'm compensated from whatever business that that I bring to the company. But them themselves, they do not pay me directly. No, yeah, no fee. Yeah. Um, so, um, tell us about schooling and and type of plans that you have for schooling for um, people that have children that might be going to college and when would you start that? Well, in terms of college savings, you want to start as early as possible. You know, I've known some people who start right at birth, some people who start when the you know, kid is five years old or maybe the child is 10 years old, but the earlier you start, the better it is, you know, because yeah. the earlier you start, the more chance you have for the money to grow and you don't, yeah. compared so to they, later on, that you might have to put more money in, you know, on a monthly basis or yeah. a yearly basis for it to grow to where you want it to be. So when they invest and they do something like that, do they also earn interest and things like that yeah. as they go along? Yep. They, if, if, they, if that's where they want to be, if they want to put money into the market, uh, there's ways that they, they can put money into the market and you know take advantage of some in the market gains there. Or well, there's definitely some other safe ways if they just want to put some money away safely and just yeah. gain you know less of a, um, interest, you know, but just more safe yeah. savings. There's different ways that they can do that too. But today, everything's so volatile, it's almost like you don't want to put it into the market, I don't know. Well, technically, it's, it, the, the market is, you know, as it, it, the market goes up and down. Yeah. But if you take any 10-year period in terms of the market, no matter what you, you pick, you know, you normally, it's like as long as you, you're balancing, you know, whatever your, your investment uh, mix is, yeah. you know, you yeah. usually get a, a, a steady return there if you're yeah. balancing it out. But if you're just going to one extreme or another then that's where your, your return goes up and down with the market. Yeah. So um, when they come into you with their children, um, you advise them to tell their children that they have a plan for them? Well, in terms of uh, the parents that, I, that I've met with, their children have been really young. So this, this, since their children have been young, you know, of course, they're not going to tell them that we're, you know, providing a plan. But it maybe as a ch child gets older and they're looking at colleges and let's say some, some parents may want to pay the whole four years. Some parents may want to only pay two years. Some parents may want to pay one year. Yeah. So depending on when the kid is actually looking for a school, they can say, you know, I have this money allotted for your school. So maybe the kid might make the choice on the school by the money that's there. Yeah. 
So what other things do you, do, do you advise people on? Well, they, well, in terms of like this year, 2012, uh, within the election, you know, just, just coming up, you know, we, like the big thing for 2013 is just state planning. So there's a lot of state planning issues that are coming up in 2013 in terms of gifting to your kids and stuff like that, uh, which which has changed a lot. So you know we we I've done a lot of planning for that. But then you know there's just the just it could be you might need an insurance plan. It might be a college plan. It might be an estate plan. You know you might just want to you know save some money. You know you might want to do a retirement plan. Yeah, and and what is the age group of people that come to see you? Um, I would say probably twenty between twenty five to about seventy five. Really? Yeah. What about somebody eighty three? Um, <laughs> eighty three. They, we there are definitely you know people that are in the eighties you know that they're still trying to do like retirement plans and yep. they want to make sure that their income's there and they might be looking at some long term cares, you know because we also uh, do, oh, do you sell long term care. Yeah, we also do long term care too. Yeah. Do. You, do you suggest that's good for people, long-term care insurance? In, in Massachusetts, especially, long-term care is, is, is always good. A lot of people don't know about the mass lien law, which in Massachusetts, as long as you have the minimum of long-term care. Does that you know, kick in after your Social Security is? Well, with the, with the, with the mass lien law, is if, you, if, you're, if you own your home and you're planning on leaving your home to your kids, if you end up going to a nursing home and you don't have any long-term care, Massachusetts can actually, you know, take your home to pay That's for the That's right, they home. will. I've yeah. seen that happen. But if, if you have a long-term care in place, yeah, as long as it's the minimum, but you have that in place and you end up needing still to go into a nursing home, then they won't put a lien on your home. Yeah. Well, how expensive is that? Well, it all depends on the person. Of course, the, the early that you get it is, uh, the, it depends on you know, the health, you know, so it's, there's no definitive price on it. Yeah. But it, it just all depends on the age and the person, their health. Yeah. Well, when would a person, would they take that when they retire or before they retire? Um, it's usually, uh, long-term care is usually between, we see basically the, the ages are probably usually 50 and older when they usually start that. That's about the time yeah. to start it. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's usually 50 and older. You, you technically should probably start in your 30s because, you know, in terms of savings, it's, you know, you, yeah. say, you yeah. save much more if you start it in your 30s. Yeah. But most people are in their 50s and older when they start thinking about that. Because they're usually between 50 to about 65 yeah. is when your home is paid off and you're thinking about making sure that, yeah. okay, if I want to leave this home to the kids or to the spouse, that it's, you know, that this yeah. is left there for them. Can you borrow on those things? The, on the long-term care, no. 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 What can you borrow on that you sell? Yeah, the only uh, policies that you can borrow on if you do a cash value um, whole life plan uh, with the cash value that's there, you can actually, you know, take some of the, the cash value that's there and you can use that for other things. Yeah. Now, when it comes down to insurance policies, you know, for death or something like that, what is the cheapest form of insurance for people to take that would protect them? The cheapest form of, of insurance, it, it all depends on your age, but the cheapest form is probably um, probably a term policy would be the cheapest form. A term policy. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, you know, still is, is for a specific need for a specific period of time. Yeah. So, you know, term policy is always good. What, at what, what time do term policies, I mean, um, at what age do you think people start getting interested in term policies? In terms of term, it's usually a lot of times is when you, when you have a child. Because usually you have a child and you might use it to protect your home. Because, yeah. you know, a child, like say, you, you might want to make sure that, you know, by the, the, mortgage, for, is, the mortgage is paid for. Yeah. Uh, or you might want to make sure that, you know, if you're planning on paying for the child's um, college funding, yeah. that you protect your child through, he's going through college. So if something happens to you, college is, he'll still be able to go, yeah. and go to college and the home will still be paid so for. So if they had term insurance, they wouldn't have to have mortgage insurance. The, Would it, they? The, the what, what do you mean by mortgage insurance? Well, mortgage insurance, if, say, the breadwinner died, it would pay off the mortgage they had left. Yeah. Where a term insurance, if you had enough in it... Yeah, if you, it would still pay off the It, it would be like... Yeah, it still it would pay off the home, but then it also would provide yeah, so you you know, funding if to you your spouse. If you had one, probably you wouldn't need the other. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, if it, yeah, if you had enough. <laughs> yeah, if you had enough, yeah. Insurance is something I know very little about. And um, what should people be wary of when they select somebody like yourself? 
What should they be wary of? Yeah, I mean, um, are there things to look for and signs to look for when they go out to f- seek an advisor? Well, in terms of you know anybody that you're any type of professional that you're looking for, you want you want to make sure that they're doing the right thing by you. Yeah. You know that any plan that you're putting together is your plan. Yeah. Because for somebody, if I right now I wouldn't do it, but if I were younger and I didn't know anything about it and I just wanted to suddenly thought, well, maybe this is time for me to get something to protect me and something like that. There's so many ads, you see, and so many things that you hear. It's hard to know what to select and where to go. Well, the, the difference between like the agents from my company and a lot of other companies, if we go out with somebody who's you know not experienced, and even somebody who's experienced and who believes that they know everything about investing, insurance, so whatever it may be that we're discussing, we actually we teach them the ins and outs, so you know, so they can make a better decision. So even if they choose to do business with us or choose to do business with somebody else, they're going to actually be able to make an informed decision. Yeah. Do you su- suggest they go online sometimes? It Well, online, you're not going to be able to ask questions back and forth. Online, you'll get information. Yeah. But if there's something you don't understand there, you're not going to be yeah. able to ask questions online. So if someone came in to you, and then you would certainly advise them as to the type of thing that would be right for them. Yeah, the, the most beneficial to them. To, to whatever the situation was, whichever the situation would be at that time, and then each year we'd meet once or twice a year, you know, to you know, see how the situation is, just see how things going on, catch up. There might be some other questions or some other needs that they might want to talk about. Yeah, it's funny because years ago when I was in the working force, insurance was always offered to us, health insurance, and life insurance. Today that isn't the case. So I just never thought about it, took what the company had, you know, and went from there. But I think today when people don't have that option a lot of times on their jobs, that maybe they think they can get away with it and not have it. But I've known so many cases where a widow was left with a mortgage and children and really suffered a a great deal. had to work two jobs and things like that, you know, to carry on. Yeah, well, a lot of people, of course, you know, that's something you you never think about in in terms of, you know, of course, you know, most people don't want to think about being deceased, you know, but, you know, there are occasions where it does happen, so it's better to be protected, um, whether, you know, if you do or if you you don't, it's better just to have that protection. It's it's for peace of mind, you know, that, that you know that it's there if something was to happen, that that you have something there that you know will protect your family, especially if you're the spouse, whether it be the man or the woman, you know, who's the breadwinner in the home. You figure if you take away that income from the home, you know, it changes the lives of the remaining spouse and, oh, and the it children. Really does change it yeah, drastically. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, so let's talk about income group. If you have a lot of money, you don't really have to worry about insurance, do you? Well, it it all it all depends because even if you even if you might be a millionaire, and let's say you had a you know a million dollars in the bank in terms of leveraging your money, um, insurance is a good way to leverage leverage your money because if you have a million dollars in the bank and you put a million dollars in insurance, you know I don't know the exact numbers, but it might buy two or three million dollars worth of insurance. So if something was to happen to you, your family would get two or three million dollars rather than get the million dollars that would have to go through probate. Because if you have a million dollars in the bank, it would go through probate before your family would get it. So they would pay the tax on that from the state before they actually got that money. Where insurance, any any benefit that comes from any insurance, is tax free. Yeah. And the question that I'd like to ask you about ins- insurance is, can another person insure another person without them knowing? No. No, that can't no. happen. Because anytime you have a, um, the whoever's the owner of the insurance policy, and you have the primary whoever's a primary insured person has to sign. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good law. Yeah. yeah they have, they have to sign. <laughs> that would lead to a lot of foul play, wouldn't yes. it? <laughs> so, for yourself, are you insured? Yes. Uh-huh. And do, so do, you, do, you, do you get after your family? Uh, yeah, for the most part, you know. But it's still, it's, it's, it has to be their decision. I can only suggest... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That's what, all you can yeah, do. That's all yeah. I can su- suggest, you know. 
what should be the right thing for them to do by their current situation. But if they choose not to do, you know, and a lot of times, you know, if somebody chooses not to do, usually it's just not the right time. No, it they, isn't. It might be something that they need, but they know right now is not the right time. So it might be later on, yeah. which, is, which is fine. Yeah. You know? I've heard the statement from some people, uh, I'm not going to insure myself because then something might happen to me, meaning that someone might take their life because I'm insured. Yeah, yeah, but the, the, the odds of that happening is probably very slim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just funny that a lot, so many movies are based on something like yeah. that. Um, I think it's fascinating. So, so you're selling um, protection to people for, for their children. You have plans for them to save for their college. And um, you have life insurance for people who have, um, you know, homes and things like that. So how many types of insurances would you say your, your, your company offers? And, and, and all, we probably, we probably offer about 10,000 different products that we offer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's how little I know about it. But yeah. I know I wanted to have um, you on the program. Uh, I have um, known your mother a long time, yeah. and I, I knew you, you didn't know me, but your mother spoke of her son going to college, and she spoke of the things you did, and she spoke about your retail, you know, and the things that you did. And um, it was so funny because it wasn't too long ago that we had lunch at Christos, and um, she had your card, and when I looked at it, I says, you know, I've never had anyone on the show that talked about insurance. Do you suppose that this gentleman, Rodney, would like to be on the show? And um, she says, well, you know how her eyes get big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I, I did come and visit you in, you in your place of business down there in Bridgewater. Yeah. That's a very impressive building. Yeah, it's a nice building. Yeah. You know, there's a couple of different companies in Right across nice from building. the NIP, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I was amazed that when I went in your office, it was so big, so professional, and uh, everybody was very, very nice. Um, and you like what you're doing now? You Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll be doing for the rest of my life. Really? Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad you found your niche. Yeah. So many people don't know their niche, do they, in this life? And uh, uh, I think it's great that you came on. I think it's great that your mother uh, talked about you. And I thought, I have so many different types of people. I've never done anything like this. And me, I don't know a thing about insurance. But I think it's fascinating because I have grandchildren. And certainly, I want to see them go to college. And uh, it would. You know, I, I'll talk about things like that to my, to my daughter, and th you know, because now I have a better appreciation for what it takes to put kids through college, it costs so much. Well, we're down to the very last part of our program. Rodney, I want to thank you for coming in. You look great, and um, thank you I want to toast to your future, <laughs> that you are a success, and everything goes well for you, and maybe the next time I'll see you married. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>